Host Nora McInerney is back for season two of The Head Start, Embracing the Journey, a podcast from Ruby Studio and Abvi. In each episode, Nora has real conversations with real people living with chronic migraine to see how they took action to understand this disease. So jump into the conversation for season two, a show that creates a little more space for empathy and understanding in such a complicated world. There shouldn't be so much hesitation around asking questions and asking for help. So don't wait. Join the Head Start Embracing the Journey and learn a little more about life with chronic migraine. What kind of programs does this school have? How are the test scores? How many kids to a classroom? Homes.com knows that these are all the things that you ask when you're home shopping as a parent. That's why each listing on Homes.com includes extensive reports on local schools, including photos, parent reviews, test scores, student-teacher ratio, school rankings, and more. The information is from multiple trusted sources and curated by Homes.com's dedicated in-house research team. It's all so you can make the right decision for your family. Homes.com. We've done your homework. Summer is upon us, and whatever you have going on, a vacation, a staycation, a summer wedding, well, Macy's has you covered. If you need summer dresses, matching sets, volume sleeve tops, wedges, straw-crafted bags, I mean, really, they have what you need head to toe. I'm talking Levi's, Dolce Vita, Lacoste, and more. So shop summer must-haves at Macy's. Go to Macy's.com slash own your style. Again, that's Macy's.com slash own your style. Life ain't always pretty, but hey, it's pretty beautiful, thing. Laugh a little more, thing. Tight, tighten up your core, thing. Said EK, you're kicking it with four things. With Amy Brown. Happy Thursday, Amy here, and Haley is joining us now. Haley was on the podcast a few weeks ago, and we introed you and everything, but this is your first time back since then. Hello. Hello. And before we came on, we were talking about my dry mouth because it's back. I think I had a period where it sort of disappeared and now it's back. And I guess it's pre-menopause situation. Not quite sure. I'm going to get my everything tested. That's, I'm just going to do it. That's just a good idea anyway. It's a good idea. I want to see what's going on. <laughs> what am I lacking? What's going on? What do what's I need? Because <laughs> I'm drinking all the water. I have electrolytes in this water. So many listeners kept saying, more electrolytes. Put this in. You just need extra things. But right now, <laughs> you said you can't hear it in my voice when I'm talking. But I... Feel it. It's just, it's uncomfortable, but I'll power through (laughs) for you. (laughs) And we were also talking about energy vampires because that's a thing. We were talking about just people that suck your emotional energy. So I literally typed into Google, what is it called when another person sucks all of your energy? And that's where energy vampires came up. And I was like, whoa, I didn't know there was an official name. There's a whole article on NBC News about how to spot and deal with an energy vampire. Oh, I didn't know it came from NBC News. It comes other places. Like a lot of people, healthline.com, energy vampires, 10 signs to watch for and how to deal with them. Ah. So we are late to the party on- (laughs) Yeah, we are. Energy vampires. Another article, (laughs) psych2go.net. Six types of people who suck your energy. And these kinds of people, they say we call, quote, energy vampires, which another party that we're late to is the narcissist one, not humans, but scents, like a smell- there is this soap that is called Narcissist. Y'all. And it's the best smelling thing ever. So good. So good. Like Haley got into my car yesterday. We went what hiking yesterday. Mm-hmm. And you're like, God, you smell so good. And I'm like, oh, thank you. And then I realized, oh, it's not me. It's the powdered Narcissist detergent that I put in a little cup that I put in my car because my friend Cryocat said to do that. And it'll just subtly release a nice scent in your car. And I guess that's what you experienced. Oh, it smells so well. They make two ones with baking soda and ones without. You want the one with baking soda, I learned, because baking soda absorbs stinky smells. So, for in the car, mm-hmm. we want the one with baking soda. That's the one I have. Yeah. So, we're good. Except for I'd be careful with that one on clothes because baking soda in certain colors in the oh, wash. I didn't know that. I, I think. Don't quote me. I'm not Martha Stewart he here. He kind of but, explained it to me like it's just like a boost, like OxyClean. 
or like if you were to put vinegar in, like it helps re- get rid of certain yeah. smells. Okay. Well, there was something I washed of my daughter's and it changed colors. It was either her clothes, but that's the first time I had used the no, baking soda. But I'm one also on hers. not the laundry queen. Just ask my husband. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would not take that advice from me. Okay. Well, Google it, but proceed with caution if you want to use it for that. I have it just in my car and it smells so good. And I only learned about it because my friend Jill came to visit me from Austin. She came up from the weekend with her two kids. So she brought a little gift for everybody, for my kids. It was so sweet. And inside my gift was a bar of soap. And she's like, oh, I'm obsessed with this. It's called Narcissist. And I thought, eh, okay. And I put it in my shower and every mm. time I use it, I'm like, oh, this smells glorious. It really does. It really does. And then you posted about it. And that's when you you realized you thought you were sharing information with some of yeah. your followers. No. and. Everybody knew about it. Everyone but me. So apparently energy vampires is a thing and narcissists. Ironically smell. enough, uh, an energy vampire and a narcissist. Oh, yeah. Make a, make a sandwich. And, oh, <laughs> not like we planned this out, but Sissy Goff is who I'm interviewing for today's episode. You'll hear it in just a second. But her book that she just wrote is called The Worry-Free Parent, which when I'm a worrying parent or I have my anxiety, like I can bring that into a room and bring everybody else into it and then suck them dry. And I really think that even if you're not a parent, you'll enjoy the chat because at the end of the day, you could just reword a few things and become the worry-free person that also interacts with other people and doesn't want to spread that to Just take the tools and apply it. Which Sissy here in Nashville runs Daystar, which is a very popular place because it's so amazing for a lot of kids and families to get therapy. And I know that you've gone there and I I want to go. I would love to do a group therapy session, even though Ben and I are divorced, either all four of us going together, me, Ben and the kids, or on the weeks he has them, maybe he goes with the kids. And then on the weeks I have them, I go with the kids. I think something about that would be really helpful, but I haven't run it by any of them. <laughs> they might be like, eh, not a good idea. It is kind of a, a hot place. Like there's a whole process of getting in, but it's it's an incredible place. So the way we have it kind of set up is my daughter goes like once a month to visit her therapist. And then every like one, there's a day of a week she goes for group therapy and it's a handful of girls her age that it's kind of like paid youth group is how I explain it to people. Where they're getting like really solid tools. Solid tools with, but instead of meeting with like a teenager that's That's guiding them, it's young life. uh, It's real therapist helping her with a real diagnosis that she's had and other kids that have it. And they're they're normalizing it. Being around other kids in a similar situation. It's very comforting. Yeah, it's it's incredible. And her therapist, the first 30 minutes will speak to her and then the last 30 minutes speak to me like every other time and kind of say, this is what you should be talking to her about. Like she certainly doesn't, you know, tell me her secrets or anything like that. But as a parent, she helps me say, maybe kind of back off a little bit or, hey, you're doing a really good job, mom. You know, it's just, I'm telling you, it's that place is magic. Yeah, I'm trying to find that fine line. And and Sissy and I talk about it coming up of, you know, being too much and then backing off, but not backing off too much. Because I admitted to Sissy that I fell into some permissive parenting where I was just, we couldn't really enforce anything because I was too scared to. And I was having a little too much compassion for some stuff that my kids were going through that I was just like, oh, I was excusing everything. It was always like, oh, well, this is probably why that's happening. So I'm just going to continue on like the day's normal and treat them the exact same. And they're going to get all the things and there's no consequences, blah, 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 blah. I will say this. Something about the therapist that I spoke to, it's like I knew that it was my daughter's therapist. And when she told me I was doing a good job as a mom, it hit different than when my therapist told me I'm a good mom because I know that my daughter's therapist has her best interest at heart. Does that make sense? Yes. I think yeah, because you're the only one reporting to your therapist. Right. That therapist is also interacting yeah. with your child. Yeah. And so it was like when I met with the lady at Daystar and she said that to me since that day, I'm not kidding. Since that day, it's like a backpack of a hundred pound weights has been lifted off my back. And I've just allowed myself to believe 
that I'm a good mom because I think, I swear to you, I think for eight years, I fooled myself into thinking that I'm just like acting like a good mom. And I'm just like doing the things that look like a good mom, but I didn't believe it. Just like one sentence, that woman being like, you're doing a really good job. Like the fact that you're even here makes you a good mom. And I was like, thank you so much. Like, can I hug you? And she's like, yeah. (laughs) That's powerful to hear too. And just as a reminder, maybe not, you know, maybe it's it's not a parent child situation. It's a, a different type of relationship. Maybe a family member, maybe someone you work with or whatever. But how powerful it can be when you truly mean it. Otherwise, just probably don't say say anything. You're doing a horrible job. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> to hear the words or to express the words to someone, how powerful that is to say you're doing a good job. You are a good mom. Yeah, it's simple, but. It's you profound. You are a good employee. You are a good sister. You are a good friend. Whatever Human. that looks yeah. like. You're a good, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll play my chat with Sissy Goff now. And I hope y'all enjoy it. And uh, follow Haley on Instagram. because She's breaking all the news. She's Woo. sharing all the things that <laughs> people clearly already know about, which her handle is at Haley Dollarhide. And I'm at Radio Amy. And here you go. Sissy Goff. It's so funny to be doing this after talking on Instagram and then meeting at Bar Taco and all the I know, things. It's I know. So well, fun. well, welcome to Four Things because I've wanted to have you on <laughs> oh, for the so podcast funny. for a very long time. So I'm happy to be sitting down with you. And this this voice you're hearing is Sissy Goff. And I have followed you, yeah, on Instagram for a while. And I want to do Four Things Gratitude with you as sort of an icebreaker yes. so people can get to know you and four okay. things you're thankful for. But first, I want to start with some facts about you. Okay. Why you're so awesome. Sissy is the executive director of Daystar Counseling Ministries here in Nashville. You work alongside your pet therapist, Lucy. Yes. Which is so cute. Yeah. You're a sought after speaker for parenting events across the country, frequent guest on CNN, Good Morning America, Christianity Today, the list goes on. Best selling author, 13 books, including <laughs> your so latest funny. book, which is why you're here today. I felt lucky that I got, got to snag you for this, for but the worry free parent, mm. finding the confidence you need so that your kids can too. And I feel like if you don't have kids, you're still going to gain something from it because it benefits to be more worry-free Ugh. in any yes. situation. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's start with the gratitude. So okay. go there and then we'll get into anxiety and worry and how it is contagious and things we can do to not pass it along. Yes. I love that plan. Four things I'm currently grateful for. I have two nephews that I'm getting to spend time with a lot these days. One is four and one's 18 months old. Henry and Witt are just delightful. And they are my sister's kids. And she lives about three blocks from me. So we have a lot of fun. Oh, if it's, my sister lived three blocks oh, away, it's amazing. the best. I got to meet your sister at Bar Taco. Which That's is so right. Fun. I know. Yeah, she was in town from Colorado. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, okay, those two little guys would be two of the biggest. Three, I'm a little behind the eight ball because I am a part of a summer camp for the kids that are in counseling at Daystar. And so I missed some things that came out this summer and I'm getting to finish Ted Lasso a little behind everyone else. So I'm so thankful for Ted. That's the beauty of streaming shows is you get to watch it whenever you want. Yes, yes. But I'm really sad to be creeping towards the end. Yeah, because it's the end. end. I know, Mm -hmm. I know. It's kind of breaking my heart. And then I would say right now, another thing I'm really thankful for that I'm really always thankful for. Have you read the Jesus Storybook Bible? My son might have something very similar. Yes. But I don't know that it's, it's called exactly that. It's definitely a children's mm-hmm. version. Yeah. But every time I read it, I weep. It just reminds me of God's love for me. And oh. so those are my four things. I love that. Yeah. And well, I'll throw in a bonus, Bar Taco. Bar because Taco. not only did I see you there, but it's one of my favorite places to go. My friends Gracie and Allie, that's sort of our meeting point. We have a quarterly oh. hang on the calendar. Now we see each other inside that quarter sure. of the year. But just in case we don't, because life gets busy with sure. all the different things, mm-hmm. we want to make sure that we have scheduled on the calendar an intentional hang time. Oh, I and love that. there's only one time we haven't done it at Bar Taco. Wow. And we went to Urban Market, which yeah. is another awesome place to eat if you're ever visiting Nashville. Mm-hmm. But Bar Taco is on 12 South. Oh. There's great shops. You can sit outside if the weather's good. Their tacos, tacos are great. Their margaritas margarita. are great. <laughs> 
months. So. Yeah. Uh, so yes. that's just a recommendation if you're ever in Nashville and you want to go do that. Something I'm definitely thankful for is your knowledge on on anxiety. And if I had to put it one way, I would say anxiety and I used to be BFFs. <laughs> like we were, we were very close. Okay. But thankfully, I've been able to create some boundaries. And, you, go, you know, we're only sort of close now. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. And, and in a nutshell, anxiety is feeling of unease. It's, it's worry. It's fear. And when those feelings, like I mentioned earlier, show up in my home, yeah. we all can feel it. Even Kara, my dog. I, right now, she's the worst culprit. I'm like, she I try really? to pet her and be like, hey, so maybe we need Lucy yep. to come over. There you go. And do some dog some therapy. Her. Yes, on, yes. On Kara, so let's talk about why or, or how anxiety is contagious. Well, it certainly is. And you're right. I mean, I think we all kind of absorb it from each other. I think sometimes it's a little bit like if you lived in a sorority house or the dorm in college and one person started their period and then everyone in the hall was on their period. Remember that feeling? Yeah. I, I still have that to this day. Is that from our, um, <laughs> what do they call that? Our pheromones? I think that's exactly right. Yes. So we have I anxiety so. in our pheromones? I mean, seriously. Well, we have mirror neurons and we learn and we absorb by watching other people. And so, I mean, I think there are a lot of ways we pass it on. If as a parent you have anxiety, your kids are seven times more likely to deal with it themselves. And so I think part of it is when our amygdala, the fight or flight part of our brain gets tripped, other people's do too. And I think sometimes, I mean, I read a, a, an article that talked about how parents who are anxious even use more catastrophic language that makes their kids panic. This is terrible. This is horrible without meaning to. There are parenting strategies that arise out of anxiety that I think make kids more anxious sometimes. So it's a lot of different ways that it shows up. So give another example of a parenting strategy that might do that. So I talk about five in the book. And I mentioned my four-year-old nephew. I have a lot of construction equipment in my head these days because we talk so much about it, you know, little guys and construction equipment. So the five types that I came up with, one is bulldozer parenting. So I'm going to clear the path ahead of them, make sure everything's okay and safe, or backhoe parenting where I'm going to pick up all their mistakes and clean up after them, or sidecar parenting. You're younger than I am, but they're was that Batman show that Robin was in the sidecar and he'd go flying around these corners. And those are the parents who will sit in my office and say, my daughter is just like me. And I had so much anxiety when I was growing up. I'm sure that's what's going on with her. And sometimes it is. And sometimes there are some other things added to the mix. And then the fifth would be parade float parenting, where I'm going to make everything really fun and happy and distracting. And you're not going to be anxious or you're not going to be sad or have any of those feelings and they're basically all ways to rescue kids from the hard thing in front of them, from the feelings arising out of that hard thing. And I wrote another book called Raising Worry-Free Kids. And in it, the definition I gave of anxiety is anxiety is an overestimation of the problem and an underestimation of ourselves. Mm. And so when we that. step in and rescue a kid, we're basically saying, you're right. It's bigger than you are. It's too big and you're too small and you can't handle it. Never intending to. That would not be the message we would want to give. But that's what they get. And then they end up becoming more anxious because they don't believe they're capable. Wow. Okay. I saw this guy on TikTok talking about gentle parenting. Yes. Which maybe you could give the exact definition of that. But with adopted children, I don't know if that's the exact category that I fall into yeah. for sure. But, you know, we don't spank. We don't shame. Mm. Have a lot of compassion for where they're coming from. Yes. They spend a lot of time in their survival brain. Right. So making sure that, you know, once the lid is flipped, it's yeah. like, okay, this is not rational thinking right now. And, right. and the pendulum can swing to where... You know, I can end up permissive. Like the example that the guy gave on TikTok is that he was knocking on his kid's door mm -hmm. to give him a surprise. Mm -hmm. And he knocks and his kid's like, what? And kind of rude. Yeah. And he's like, okay, I'm going to walk away, give you space in his head, not giving him that surprise. We'll try this again. Yeah. And instead of being like, oh, well, I'm so excited to just give him the gift. I'm sure he's going through a lot right now or she, whoever the kid is. And that's what I found myself doing with my kids is so much like compassion too far yes. to where I was excusing certain behaviors yes. because I was like, Oh, they're already going through so much and I don't want to make it. And so I would come in and then I realized, Oh my goodness, like this is not gentle parenting. This is permissive. And yeah. I'm allowing things that are 
totally unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And I'm not doing them any favors by allowing this behavior to continue. Well, I mean, even watching you doing that, sitting in the room with you, I mean, it looks like you're tiptoeing when you're describing what you were doing, which is what we end up doing with kids when we're accommodating them so much. And too much power for kids creates insecurity, whereas boundaries create security. And so that kind of tiptoeing Like it's easy to do where, oh, they're having a hard time and I've got to, you know, then we end up making them more insecure on purpose. But when you can have boundaries that are gentle and kind, but still boundaries, it makes them feel more secure. All right, you got to love a place that makes shopping for gifts super easy because heads up, Father's Day is June 16th and Macy's has got you covered. Their ultimate gift guide makes shopping for the dad or the dad figure in your life super easy. You can shop by price, 25 and under, 50 and under, 100 and lux. You can shop by category, like cologne, watches, leather goods. You can even shop by gift lists. Like if your dad loves to grill, then shop for grill master things. If your dad loves to golf, then you can go to the gift list that is for the golfer. I mean, really, Macy's has thought of it all. If you have a tech-savvy dad, voila, Macy's Gift Finder, again, has you covered with that. Top gifts include Beats headphones, JBL portable speakers, Nintendo Switch, and more. Top brands such as Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, Polo Ralph Lauren, Columbia, and more. Really, Macy's has it all, so don't be a last-minute shopper. Father's Day is June 16th. Make sure to check out Macy's.com slash gift finder to find a unique gift they'll love. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Something that I've learned in therapy is that goals are really important. Like, it can really help you out. Like, when life is going so fast, it's important to take a moment to celebrate how far you've come, celebrate those wins, but also look forward to where you're going. Make adjustments for the rest of the year. And therapy can help you take stock of your progress and set achievable goals for the next three months, the next six months. I have personally benefited from therapy in so many ways. I feel like we'd be here all day if I were to tell you all of the ways therapy has helped me out, giving me tools to have my back pocket for when we need to bust them out, coping skills, how to set boundaries. I feel so much more empowered uh, because of therapy. So I'm very thankful for it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, well, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Take a moment, visit betterhelp.com slash four things today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash four things. Again, you're going to get 10% off your first month. From searching online to asking your friends and family, there are a lot of ways to look for jobs. But have you considered finding your next job through a staffing company? Your local Express Employment Professionals team is your one connection to endless job opportunities. With just one application, they can help you find a job at a company that fits your needs. Visit ExpressPros.com. And as always, Express never charges job seekers a fee. Express knows when companies are hiring, offers benefits and competitive pay. And in just one interview, they are prepared to present you to multiple companies who fit your needs. Express Employment Professionals places people in all kinds of jobs, including everything from customer service to warehouse jobs to accounting and IT roles. Let Express help you. And remember, there is never a fee for job seekers. Go to ExpressPros.com to get started and discover for yourself what it's like to have support in your job search. You can also start through the Express Jobs app. Download it today to search jobs, apply, and contact your local Express office. Here's what I most recently did, and you can give great. I had to have a sit down, just sort of like, hey, look, love you. You are safe here. I want to provide for you. All of your basic needs are met. I want nothing but the best for you. However, some of the icing on top stuff at this point right now, not happening. When I can start to see some improvement in this direction, then we'll talk about going and doing whatever it is that you wanted to do. That will get added back in. But as of right now, we're living basic needs. So is that an okay thing for me to do? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Because I think you're giving them the opportunity to hope and to earn it back, which is awesome. And you're providing them with this is the way to earn it back. Here's what you need to be working on. And 
I mean, I do think it's hard. And and I also would say, you know, there are a lot of factors that come in. And one of them is a child's personality. And and I tell parents a lot, I don't want you to base your parenting off of their response. Because who they are, every child's going to be different. And there are kids who it feels like nothing works with them. They're going to say, I don't care. Doesn't matter to me. Or just roll their eyes at you. And with those kids, I think most of the time they have a personality that has to win. And so if you gave them consequence or you sat them down and had that conversation and said, we're taking some things and you're going to gradually earn them back. And they said, whatever, that's because you just won when you had that conversation or when you gave a consequence as the parent. And so their only, only ability to retaliate is to act like, I don't care. They just don't have any other option to feel like they're in control. And so don't believe it. I believe they're manipulating you in those times. So pick a thing. I say, I feel like with parents, you just need to pick a thing and stick with it because you having the boundaries means you're parenting them. And that's going to get to them more than anything. The fact that you won in that way. So stay with it. And, and I also think a great phrase is just try again. When they're being disrespectful, like you said, often they don't know what's coming out that way. And just to say, Hey, I don't think that came out the way you meant for it to. Why don't you try that again? I love that. Not angry. Just give them another opportunity. If they still don't get it, then maybe you talk about a consequence. But I'm so glad you said that because it, it, that is a powerful one. Yeah. Let's try that again. Yeah. And then it shows grace yes. of we get to do things over and we can choose another way. And hopefully they'll give that to us because I have lost my marbles. Yeah. I am sorry that I screamed. I'm sorry that I yelled. I'm sorry that I, you know, threw that. I mean, not at them, but right. <laughs> um, honestly, sometimes I feel as though I get into that survival part of my brain. Of course and you do. I am fight, flight, freeze. Yes. What, pick one. Yes. <laughs> Depends on the well, day. But Amy, I'm so glad you said that because that's one of the things that I feel like is really true in this day and age. I'm having more parents and I think moms in particular behind the closed doors of confidentiality in my office say I'm losing it and I'm getting so angry. And and I really believe every parent, I think most of us just as people, when we get angry, it's not because we're bad, mean people. Often it's because you're anxious and you want something really good in the moment for your child, whether it's you're trying to get out the door to school and they're running late and you know, they've had five tardies and this means Saturday school. And so you get mad because you don't want them to miss the birthday party on Saturday they wanted to go to, or you get mad at them and lose it because you know, these things you want to see growing in them in terms of their character and it's not happening. And so it feels out of control and you get mad. And so I think when we can give ourselves more grace, it changes everything in how we connect. And so to be able to step back, get out of that survival part of your brain and think about who do I want to be in this moment and what does it look like for me to give myself grace? So as we're trying to become a worry-free parent or a a worry-free person, yes, I know in the book you talk about uncovering the roots of our own anxiety. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Obviously, it means we have to face some stuff. Yes, yes. I think I have a sentence in there about past hurts and present pressure dictate future fear. And I think we just get into the voice. Say that again. Past hurts, Mm -hmm. which we all have them. Present pressure, which I've never seen parents feel as much pressure as I do today. It makes me crazy. What What do you think is attributing to that? I think social media is a huge piece of it. And the families that we see, that we only see their highlight reel, that whole idea, and I mean, honestly, I think parents are following too many experts, which is funny to say when I'm kind of putting myself out there a little bit like that. But you know what I mean? You have 30 different people telling you 30 different things. Of course, you don't feel like you can get it right. Yeah. Follow at Raising Boys and Girls on Instagram <laughs> <laughs> and also at Sissy Goff. Those are her accounts. You're the best, Amy. <laughs> oh, you're y'all, so are, y'all are good experts well, to follow. But you mean we're in there's the just when you're getting so much yes. information, it's overwhelming. Yes. All those things then spin us out into feeling like I'm not doing it right or my kid's not measuring up or there are all these things I have to be doing. I mean, even the whole there's that movement right now about you have 52 Saturdays a year and you have you know, however many days in their life before they leave your home, you know, all those things. Yeah, this is like one summer out of only 18 that you get, so make it count. Yes, stop. Whoever's saying that, please stop saying it. Because I think it's just increasing the anxiety in all of us. Like, oh, I've got to make this time count and I'm not, I'm distracted for a minute or I missed something and just feels so much, so much pressure. Yeah, I've seen those and they haven't gotten, I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> and maybe <laughs> it's because I became a mom later and my kids were older when they got here and I, it took us five years to get them. So mm-hmm. I know, I, I, I'm thankful to have them right now. Yes. And 
I'll be fine when they spread their wings. I, I'm actually excited for them to have opportunity. That's why they came from Haiti to America. Right. Was I feel as though that's what their birth moms want for them. Yes. Is Maybe they want to beautiful. see them have a, a chance yes. at something. Yes. So I guess that's probably why those didn't impact me mm-hmm. that way. But I could see how those that's causing some some pressure. Yes. But I love you need to do one of those TikToks or do the video, the green screen <laughs> where you get in front of one of those videos and you're like, hey, sissy off here. <laughs> this this video right here, don't fall for it. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a present pressure trap. I'm not on TikTok. I'm not that cool. Well, Instagram. But yes, you can Instagram. do it as a yeah. as a reel. Yeah. I know you're very okay. active on Instagram. I mean, you have, a, you have over 100,000 followers. Well, trying to help as much as I can. I mean, that just shows that's your credibility. That mm. shows the people that are trusting what you're saying and you deliver it in a digestible way. And that's why you have 13 best-selling books. And I know another thing so that you touch on in addition to that we need to uncover our mm-hmm. own anxiety and work through that is healthy ways to process it so we don't pass it on with one or two examples of processing in a healthy way okay two i would give one is i want every family to have a code word just a word that means we're going to pause right here because they're in their survival brain you're going to flip right into yours i mean parents say they're like to me all the time in my office they're like a crazy person and all of a sudden i was too And so if you have a code word that is watermelon or whatever it is, that means when anybody in our family says that, we're going to pause, we're going to stop, and we're going to separate, even if that means we can't talk it out right now. Like you said, we're not going to get to a healthy conversation when we're operating out of our amygdala. So watermelon, I'm going to go back to my space, think about who I want to be in this moment. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to take some deep breaths. And whatever I need to do, whether it's square breathing, that's one of my favorite ways. I love breath prayers where we're breathing in a statement and breathing out a different one that reminds us of truth in that moment, even of who we want to be. And then... Like, I I am a good mother. Yes. I am capable of handling the situation with peace. Like That's Excel beautiful. Or beautiful. I, or maybe I have, I just haven't yet learned how to handle this particular situation, Exhale, but I am capable of doing it. And we're pausing until I figure it out. Yes. Something like breathing in. Sissy and Amy say, I'm a good mom. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just simple. And then square breathing is four, 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 four. Yep, exactly. Or five, 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 five. Yes. Because when we do that, the blood vessels in our brain dilate and it shifts the blood flow away from the amygdala. That's the survival part and back to the prefrontal cortex that helps us think rationally and manage our emotions. So when we're all in the survival brain, no one's brain that thinks rationally is even working. It's offline. And so we can't get to a helpful place until we can calm our bodies back down. So code word, pause, Do you think it's more fun to have a code word, like you said, that's like watermelon? Or just can we just say pause? Or is there something cool about if it's more unity team, we're a team, we have this code word? Yes. Your kids are in on coming up with what it is. Maybe it's even a funny thing. Yeah. I mean, you can definitely say pause, but... No, no, I'm I'm definitely going to adopt this because okay. at, at our house we just say, "Hey, I need I need some space," and my kids are now good at expressing that. Good. My son did it just the other day. He said, "I I just can't I, I can't talk right now. I need space," and I was very proud of him. So of course I acknowledge that. That's very awesome. You were able to identify you needed that space space granted, <laughs> and you know I, I I walk away, but it, it would be way more fun. To have, have a fun you word know. y'all come up with. Yeah. Like SpongeBob. Mm-hmm. Yeah. SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes. I think one of the biggest traps for parents with anxiety is anxiety feels like good parenting. And so I've got to be vigilant because you do as a parent, but we cross over into hypervigilance too much. I always talk about it with kids like the one loop roller coaster at the fair. Anxious thoughts just circle around and around and around. That's how we know what they're anxious thoughts. So we want to start with calming our bodies down and then move to our thoughts because our thoughts are where we get in trouble. You remember the stop, drop, roll thing? All right, you got to love a place that makes shopping for gifts super easy because heads up, Father's Day is June 16th and Macy's has got you covered. Their ultimate gift guide makes shopping for the dad or the dad figure in your life super easy. You can shop by price, 25 and under, 50 and under, 100 and lux. You can shop by category like cologne, watches, leather goods. 
You can even shop by gift lists. Like if your dad loves to grill, then shop for grill master things. If your dad loves to golf, then you can go to the gift list that is for the golfer. I mean, really, Macy's has thought of it all. If you have a tech-savvy dad, voila, Macy's Gift Finder, again, has you covered with that. Top gifts include Beats headphones, JBL portable speakers, Nintendo Switch, and more. Top brands such as Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, Polo Ralph Lauren, Columbia, and more. Really, Macy's has it all, so don't be a last-minute shopper. Father's Day is June 16th. Make sure to check out Macy's.com slash gift finder to find a unique gift they'll love. From searching online to asking your friends and family, there are a lot of ways to look for jobs. But have you considered finding your next job through a staffing company? Your local Express Employment Professionals team is your one connection to endless job opportunities. With just one application, they can help you find a job at a company that fits your needs. Visit ExpressPros.com. And as always, Express never charges job seekers a fee. Express knows when companies are hiring, offers benefits and competitive pay. And in just one interview, they are prepared to present you to multiple companies who fit your needs. Express Employment Professionals places people in all kinds of jobs, including everything from customer service to warehouse jobs to accounting and IT roles. Let Express help you. And remember, there is never a fee for job seekers. Go to expresspros.com to get started and discover for yourself what it's like to have support in your job search. You can also start through the Express Jobs app. Download it today to search jobs, apply, and contact your local Express office. Okay, I'm starting to hear my girlfriend's buzz about a little pink pill for women. Have you heard of it? My doctor told me it's called Addy. It's FDA approved and clinically proven to boost sex drive in certain premenopausal women bothered by low libido. This is huge. A little pink pill for us. Ask your doctor about Addy. Or if you're shy to bring it up in person, go online for a telehealth appointment at Addy.com. That's A D D Y I.com. Addy, or Flavanserin, is for premenopausal women with acquired generalized hypoactive sexual desire disorder, HSDD, who have not had problems with low sexual desire in the past, who have low sexual desire no matter the type of sexual activity, the situation, or the sexual partner. The low sexual desire is troubling to them and is not due to a medical or mental health problem, problems in the relationship, or medicine or other drug use. Addy is not for use in men or to enhance sexual performance. Your risk of severe low blood pressure and fainting is increased if you drink one to two standard alcoholic drinks close in time to your Addy dose. Wait at least two hours after drinking before taking Addy at bedtime. Your risk of severe low blood pressure and fainting is also increased if you take certain prescriptions, over-the-counter or herbal medications, or have liver problems. Low blood pressure and fainting can happen when you take Addy, even if you don't drink alcohol or take other medicines. Do not take if you are allergic to any of the ingredients in Addy. Allergic reactions may include hives, itching, or trouble breathing. Sleepiness, sometimes serious, can occur. Common side effects include dizziness, nausea, tiredness, difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, and dry mouth. See full PI and medication guide, including boxed warning, at addy.com PI, or call 844-PINK-PILL. Addy. That's a d d y i dot com. You remember the stop, drop, roll thing? Did yes. you learn that? So instead of stop, drop, roll, stop, drop, flip. So you got to stop the thought, and often that's calming your body down is going to help do that. Recognize when it's a looping thought, drop it. Where literally you're thinking, I'm not going to keep going with this, and we can do different things to help us drop it, like. I love a grounding technique called five, four, three, two, one, where you think of five things you see, four things you hear, three things you feel, you know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. two things you smell, one you taste, because that focuses you on something different. And then the flip is flipping the negative thought to a more positive one, because our negative thoughts too are where we get in trouble. So instead of, I scream at my kids so many mornings getting out the door, I really want the best for my kids. And it's just my delivery is off. It doesn't mean I'm a bad parent. So how can you flip the thought to something more positive? I love it. Stop, drop, and flip. Yeah. That's even fun, too, to go over with your kids. Yeah, totally. Because they can stop, drop, and flip. Totally, yes. What about modeling bravery? I would say kids need to see you do things that intimidate you and scare you and not just see you do it, although I think that's really important. I want them to hear you say, I had to give a presentation at such and such today, and I was really nervous. And I told Worry I wasn't going to listen to him, and I went ahead and I did it anyway. Because it's not just they need to see you succeed. They need to hear what's happening in your brain because it's happening in theirs too. And you are their heroes, even if they're not saying it out loud. So when you model that, that 
things can be hard and you can still do brave things, that gives them the confidence to do it too. Okay, let's walk through this scenario of a kid might be trying out for a sports team. Yes. And let's say they don't make it. Mm. What advice would you give a parent when that kid comes home? Just curious, and I'm sure as school has started back up in this semester and next semester, people Mm -hmm. are trying out for things or auditioning. Well, I'm hearing more and more stories of parents who are doing that backhoe thing and calling the coach and trying to get an extra spot. I would not recommend doing that. I don't think that's helpful. Oh, wow. Okay. I I, I wouldn't do that. No, I would never assume you would do that. But just if anyone listening feels tempted. So that sounds like that rescuer that's coming in. and Exactly. And I did not make cheerleading when I was in seventh grade and it crushed me. And because I didn't, I was put in different leadership positions as a middle schooler and then even more as a high schooler, which is part of why I'm who I am today. And and I don't think we need to say that to them in the moment because they're going to feel like we're not hearing where they are and what they feel and dismissing it. But I think to sit with them first and give them a lot of space to be really sad and to know that it really does feel like heartbreak if they don't make a team. And to say, I can't wait to see what is in store for you. I can't wait to see the amazing things. you're And I think that's all we have to say. I don't think we have to lecture like, you're going to have more time. They are going to have more time to do other things. But, but just that we are offering a little bit of hope in the midst of sadness. And And I don't think there's anything else you can do other than sit with them. That's such a simple line too. I can't wait to see what is in store for you. Yeah, And that would work on me too as an adult. (laughs) Sometimes there's there's promotions we don't get or work opportunities that don't turn out like we thought. And it's like, we can tell ourselves, well, I can't wait to see what's in store for me next. Or what, what does this make? Possible. That's a great reminder. I love uh, that. Yeah. Donald Miller gave us the what does this make possible question. Yes. And, you know, of course, we have that way of thinking here, mm-hmm. having a more of, well, okay, surely this happened. So now let's figure out why and where we're going to go from here. But just this, what does this make possible? That was such a like, that's just I've never heard that. Brilliant that's way. Awesome. Well, I, I had never heard or thought about just being like, I can't wait to see what's in store for you. Yes. I love when guests just bring a good one liner Mm. or a good one, you know, easy question to ask. That's just very, very, very powerful. And you have a lot of content just like that up on your Instagram, which I I shared earlier and your podcast, Raising Boys and Girls. Which we're hoping we're going to get you on soon. Oh, well, come on. You will? Okay. But I mean, I don't know what, listen, I don't know what you have. Do you just have parents come on? Yes. Do like a parents in the trenches? Yeah, th- therapy session? No, <laughs> no. Are you kidding? You've already said so many good things you're doing. Well, only Love because of one. only because of of experts. Like even as a parent, there are times I've been so desperate where I have searched out podcasts, and I know there's one in particular. I need to go back and figure out which one it was, mm-hmm. but it was in 2020, and it was a mom that was doing a podcast. I don't think she had a platform. I think she was recording it at home. I think she was an adoptive mom that just wanted to talk to other adoptive moms. And she had on a guest one day that had written a book. She was self-published, a mom that just wanted to share her story and had permission from her adopted son to share the story Mm because he was over 18 and he wanted to be a part of it. And I got to take the time to go through and find the podcast, but I just remember putting in keywords in the podcast search to see what would pull up. And this episode pulled up and I listened to it. I think she lived in Texas, maybe, not even sure. So then I ordered the person's book Mm -hmm. and then I read the book and in the book, she mentioned a therapist in Colorado. So I Googled the therapist in Colorado. I reached out to him. It's COVID. We're able to do some virtual type things. He recommended something else that recommended something else. He wasn't big on social media. He's way, he's significantly Mm -hmm. older, but very wise. Yes. And it changed our life. That's incredible. So for anybody listening, sometimes, uh, you know, if you're thinking about starting a podcast, you're like, I don't really know what I'm doing. Or you're thinking about posting some stuff that you think might be helpful, maybe not. But again, publishing a book. Yeah. Every family, they have their own story. They have their own journey. The thing is, when your kids are young, it's hard because Mm. it's their story too. So for me, I don't feel like that's on me to share certain things. But the fact that those moms were doing that and they got together and it wasn't like their profession or their career, Yes, which it, which it is really yours cool. and you have so many tools and resources, but that's just my gratitude but shout it out. it feels for like it. someone alongside you. Yeah. yeah for anybody trenches. putting out anything, just knowing that as a parent, when you're in the trenches, you're not alone. Yes. And so yes. I would gladly come on your podcast, Good. even though I don't feel as though I would 
add whatever value to it, but I just tell that story to remind myself, who knows, there might be one person listening that might need to hear something that comes up yes. in our conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I accept. Okay, good. Yes. I'm so excited. I accept. Good. Okay. Uh, in raisingboysandgirls.com too, mm -hmm. people can go there yes. and anywhere yes. else you want to send people. Obviously, I'll link the new book in Amazon, which is The Worry-Free mm -hmm. Parent, Finding the Confidence You Need So Your Kids Can Too. And that's it. That's the goal. We need to be confident parents with boundaries so that our kids grow up to know how to be confident and handle life. Yeah. And Amen. we cannot be permissive because that, that was me literally two weeks ago. I realized it. I, I'm glad I had the awareness. So shout out to whatever guy on TikTok posted that. <laughs> well, it's confusing. I feel like there's a lot that makes you feel like that's who you're supposed to be now. I Very much so. Well, thank you, Sissy. I mean, it's so fun to talk to you. So fun. And I guess I'll talk to you soon on, on your podcast yes. or I'll run into you at Bar Taco. Either way, sounds amazing. Okay, awesome. Bye. All right, this sun season, evolve your sun care with new Banana Boat 360 coverage. With Advanced Control Mist, it's a new way to spray. It's an all-new bottle for an all-new mist experience that smells great and is incredibly light on your skin. You can even customize your spray. Like to cover targeted areas, you just tap the trigger lightly, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long-lasting banana boat protection. Plus, it's refillable. From sweat-resistant sport formula to kids' SPF 50+, plus, this is sun care that'll come in handy when my kids are swimming, playing sports, when I'm hiking, when we're out at the lake, or whatever it is that we're doing outdoors. Shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. In every pair of Tacova's boots, you can expect handmade quality, first wear comfort, and timeless Western style. Tacova's boots are always made from premium bovine and exotic leathers, and with occasional resoling, they're going to last a lifetime. The best way to shop for boots is at your local Tacova store, where you're going to be greeted by the smell of fresh leather and a friendly smile. So come on in, grab a cold one, get fitted by a pro, and shop the latest styles. Visit tacovas.com. That's T-E-C-O-V-A-S dot com. And don't go gently, y'all. Amazon Pharmacy presents Painful Thoughts. The guy in front of me in the pharmacy line is halfway through an incredibly detailed 17-minute story about his gout, a story likely more painful than the gout itself. Next time, save yourself the pain and let Amazon Pharmacy deliver your meds right to your door. Amazon Pharmacy. Healthcare just got less painful.